question for you. How do we combine squash beetles, <coughs> girls with pearl earrings, and uh, underground laser laboratories? Okay, better question, why would you even want to? Well, I can tell you that the answer, whatever it is, starts with anthroquinones. Anthroquinones are a group of natural red dye molecules extracted from insects and plants that have structures like the ones you see up on the slide here. They have been used by humanity for thousands of years, literally, from ancient warfare through Renaissance art to modern medicine. You can think of it. Chances are there's actually anthroquinone involved in there somewhere. Anthroquinones are important because of the way they interact with light. Unfortunately, the same light that lets you see the anthroquinones blushing so beautifully in the lips of the girl here is also slowly destroying them. And here we come to the crux of my thesis. Can we protect these important but vulnerable molecules? More so, can we even bring back anthroquinones that have already faded? What's even going on with these molecules? Well, I can tell you. When light interacts with a molecule, that molecule is catapulted into a higher energy, reactive, excited state. From that excited state, the molecule can relax back down to a nice safe ground state. It can react with another molecule, or if it's unlucky, it can end up as a mass of colorless molecular giblets. If we could work out exactly why a molecule might take that rather unfortunate last route, we might be able to better protect it. So, how am I going to delve into the secret lives of molecules? Well, the technique I'm using, deep breath, is called femtosecond transient absorption spectroscopy. And essentially, it's multi-flash photography for molecules. Like the picture of the diver that you can see here, the electrons and nuclei in an excited state molecule are moving in space and time. By taking multiple snapshot spectra of that molecule in its excited state, we can track that movement in real time. The femtosecond part comes in when you consider on what time scale molecules actually do this rearrangement of themselves. A femtosecond is a millionth of a billionth of a second. That's really fast. <laughs> so how do we measure something this fast? Well, in order to do that, I've built a femtosecond pulse laser-based camera. With this camera, I've been studying two anthroquinones in particular, alizarin and purpurin. They're two of the oldest, most important, and most widely used anthroquinone molecules in many fields. Despite the fact that they only differ by one little hydroxyl group, you can see the structures are quite similar, purpurin is well known to fade much more quickly than alizarin does. Why? Well, as you can see on the graph here, which is the kind of information we extract from our multi-flash photographs of the molecule, you can see the plot of the excited state as a function of time after excitation. As you can see, purpurin stays in that excited state for much longer, that excited reactive state, opening it up to the possibility <coughs> of reaction, degradation, destruction, and general mayhem. Alizarin zips back down to the ground state much more quickly, thereby dodging that bullet. So, now that we know what's going on, it's our task to use that to try and preserve these molecules better and thereby preserve the art. <coughs> what's more, can we use the chemistry of light to turn back time and bring back anthroquinones that have already faded? Thank you for your attention. <laughs>